Hey YouTube, it's Mark and Rocky and we are This, this Cruise, Cruise Life. Life. We are coming to you from a very special place today. We are here on board Margaritaville at Sea Islander. That's right. We were on the inaugural cruise as well as the what we like to call inaugural junior cruise. So much great content that we collected over these past two sailings and we want to bring it to you. We're going to tell you everything that you need to know about this ship and we're going to tell you about what we loved what we didn't love and what we hated. hated so stick around let's talk about what we loved and in true this cruise life fashion we're going to talk about the food oh there is so much great food here on board the islander uh let's start by talking about jwb prime steakhouse we decided to purchase the ultimate dining chill package for our second cruise because we really wanted to try all of the amazing food that's available for you well of course and uh we recorded our entire experience up in jwb prime what we can tell you on this video is the wagyu beef meatball is amazing that whole dinner was amazing but it, but you don't have to pay to have good food on board no i also absolutely fell in love with mexican cutie cantina day one which is on port side and yep. on starboard side there's another burger at sea there's another burger in town Ooh. uh cheeseburger in paradise it absolutely goes head to head to that other burger brand that you might see on some other cruise ships it was amazing it was very good hot juicy flavorful loved it frank and lola's is a fantastic option for pizza and i and i honestly think it gets even better as the night goes on <laughs> there is something pizza hits different at one in the morning <laughs> it's just delicious and the crust yeah. is phenomenal i think you're really going to love this pizza yes now we're not big buffet guys as you know but the indian food on the buffet this cruise has been fantastic now as we move down into the ship in the islander main dining room we got to enjoy the bubbles up brunch and that was such a great experience they have both a breakfast menu a lighter fare menu as well as your lunch menu and i will tell you that those options on the lunch menu were Gosh. knockout great the huevos rancheros was one of the best things that i've had on this entire cruise the macaroni and cheese oh. we got a side of macaroni and cheese we each, we got, each one, got one and it was huge and it was my side to my fettuccine alfredo i had pasta for my pasta it was delicious now some will say it's an upcharge i'm not going to spend the money remember you get a glass of bubbly glass of mimosa so we looked at it as an investment into a drink we would buy anyway it was good it was great <laughs> then we left the islander for brunch and we went to the islander for dinner another upcharge restaurant that's available here on margaritaville at sea islander it is an upscale dining experience it's above from the finn's main dining room on that second floor yep. um it's got tablecloths linen service and just a, an elevated service experience up there right now i will say it is pretty much the same menu that you'll find in the finn's main dining room downstairs however they've added a little extra that you can pick from from your entree your appetizer and your dessert and that's what elevates the experience and just makes it a little bit nicer now the one thing that i would say is it looks very similar to the dishes you get downstairs and so we talked about that last night at dinner yeah you know maybe an elevated maybe elevated dishes maybe elevated presentations presentation that would make it uh, just take it up that extra notch right agreed well that's a lot to love about the food oh my gosh we did not go hungry even once not once <laughs> no so let's start by talking about the drinks next so let's get thirsty and head on over to Havana daydreaming sports bar yes. this is one of the prettiest spaces on board uh margarita bit let's see really kept a lot of the original design in this space and it is absolutely one of my favorites it's just beautiful the drinks are good anoop made sure that we didn't go thirsty he was great um, there is a there's live music in this space now the one thing that i will say is uh on the first couple of sailings they're still working on the sound so it was really loud in that space even walking through at night it could get really loud so just keep that in mind but it is an absolute great space to enjoy beverage it is speaking of great places for beverages bubbles up live lounge such a cool design space uh very calming very great ambience there i absolutely love the chandeliers that are in there they look like little bubbles in the ceiling that change color throughout the day there's a pianist that will play there in the evenings and really just a great menu i love the tiffany box that has the menu inside so fun great little touches champagne inspired drinks yes please 
Bunnies. Right. Rocky, what's right above Bubbles Up Lounge? That's where you're going to find the Hemisphere Dancer Craft Spirits Bar. Another really great venue. It's nice dark woods and leathers everywhere. And you have a lot of your, well, it's very flight themed, which is kind of fun. So yeah. you open up your flight book and you get to choose which beverage you're going to enjoy. And that one has your bourbons and your whiskeys and your mezcals. Some really great options there at the Hemisphere Dancer Craft Spirits. And the thing that I love the most about the drinks on board Margaritaville at Sea is you are not going to get bored. Each of the bars has a unique menu, a different menu with featured drinks. And so you could literally drink your way around this ship and not repeat the same drink twice. Sounds you, like a fun challenge. You will. You will, <laughs> because there are some that you're going to find that you're going to absolutely love. Right. But we really loved the drinks on board. And then we mentioned the, the drink that comes with your Bubbles Up brunch. Right. Very good. Let's jump into the entertainment. Now, this section is a uh, going to be a little bit bigger because there's so much happening around the ship, from live music to performance shows to bands to just yes. everything that's happening. One of my favorite things was right when we walked on board. I'm counting this as entertainment. They handed us a welcome glass of champagne. There were crew members there ready to welcome us, dancing, celebrating, having a blast. Look at my reaction to walking on board this ship. I have goosebumps. Uh, it was just an amazing experience. <laughs> and if you don't remember, the first sailing, the inaugural, is and they actually gave everyone a lay as we were stepping onto the ship That's as right. well. So That's there was, right. we were getting things from both directions. It was, it was fun. Awesome. It was. Now, talking about the entertainment on board, I will say that we have seen one of our new favorite shows at sea, and that is Margaritaville's Conky Tonkin at Sea show. It is so much fun. If you don't know country or if you're not a huge fan of country, you're still going to have okay. a great time. They make such great use of that stage in the uh, Stars on the Water lounge. It's so much fun. I have never seen a spirit class stage pushed to the max <laughs> like they have done in this show. You are going to love it. Yes, you are. But, but that's not the only stage show. There's no. more stage shows. Plus, they've got Jimmy's music playing throughout the ship. Now, you're not going to hear it every single place you go, every single minute of the day, but you are going to hear Jimmy every day on the cruise. I promise you that. They don't overdo it, but his live concerts are playing. There's music playing. Like It's just a fun vibe and a great way to celebrate Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, I think we might be becoming parrot heads. I think we might be becoming parrot heads. Yes, fins <laughs> up. Fins up, as our cruise director ZJ says. Speaking of ZJ, she has been amazing. She has so much energy. I don't know how she does it, but she is at all of the stage production shows. You hear her coming onto the PA systems to let us know what's going on throughout the day. And her sign off is always to put your fins up. And we just have such a great time. We've met her and talked with her. Really cool yeah. person. Don't miss ZJ. If you sail, when you sail, that's right. Make it a point to say hello. Um, she stops to talk to everyone, which is something that's really special in a cruise director. It is. And while we're talking about things that ZJ introduced, she also made mention of a couple of pop-up performances that happened over the course of our cruises. Mm. So much fun. Do not miss out on them. Speaking of that captain's gala evening, what a special moment. So it is, of course, it's Margaritaville, so it's not a champagne toast. It is a margarita toast, and they've got crew members walking around and handing folks uh, champagne flutes right. with margarita right. in it. Um, ZJ introduces the captain. The captain, he's a hoot, yes, which he is. you would expect on a margarita villa at sea sailing. Don't miss the captain's gala no. evening. Don't miss that conky tonk night. It is great. And then you'll head into that giant old school theater. Oh, it is such a beautiful theater. I don't think they touched it when they did the dry dock wow. for this ship. It is amazing. You feel the history coming from the theater. All of that tile work and the curtain and how it matches the little tables. There's so many great little elements that come from that theater. And it's huge. Yeah. Three stories of just amazing performance. You don't have to worry. Like some of the new ships we've seen, some of those reviews where you have to worry about getting a seat in the theater. You are going to be good. Uh, and there are a lot of great views. There really are. And then after the show, we had the absolute fortune of getting our photo taken with the entire cast, which was such a special moment for us. You know us, we love live theater and we love entertainment on board a cruise ship. Yeah. And so getting to meet the cast and getting our photo taken was really a highlight. That was. Now, there is no worry of not getting music on this ship. <laughs> the, every space that you go to, well, maybe not every space, but a good majority of the spaces on this ship have live musicians performing for you. And it is just such a great vibe. You can find the music that really sings to you uh, at the different venues. So 
don't be afraid to walk the ship and find where your place is. And it's a spirit class ship, which we absolutely love because they're so easy to walk. They are. Um, and there is something happening everywhere, whether, whether it's the live um, performers up on Lido deck, right. whether it's in Havana Daydreaming Sports Bar. Right. Uh, there's Bubbles just, up loud, like everywhere. Everywhere you go. Yeah. But the entertainment doesn't end with music. No. There's all sorts of activities on board as well. Whether you want to make an origami swan or you want to go to ZJ's Morning Trivia, Ooh. you want to play the Cornhole Challenge course. Ooh. We've I've never seen something like this before at sea. It is so cool. What a cool space. It's epic. It's huge. So much fun. Now, while you're up there, you can also take your paddles out and do pickleball. We never didn't done part- that before. We didn't partake, but it looks fun. It does look fun. It's a really cool space. And then there's also a really awesome mini golf course up there on that top deck. And for the kiddos, don't forget the water slide at the aft of the ship as well. Um, so you can go zooming on down. We did that yesterday because you told us you wanted to see us go down <laughs> that water slide. And it was it's a fun. ton of fun. It is. Okay, let's jump on into the ship and the design. Now, before we talk about the design of the ship, I want to talk about the design of the boarding experience in the terminal. Oh, yeah. Do you remember when we sailed the Paradise and I said, you know, this was such an easy hit to add branding into this terminal, add some Jimmy's music, and, like, just create that Margarita Bill experience before you even board the ship? Right. Well, guess what? That's exactly what they've done in Port Tampa. There are so many cool theming elements. There's music. And I will tell you, the crew there was so happy to welcome us on the first couple of sailings. It was just an awesome touch. Well done, Margarita Valetzi. Absolutely agree. Now, as we are sailing away and you get your port stops in, take a look at the outside of this ship. They did such a great job with the hull design, the the Islander logo at the forward of the ship, and just the waves and everything up there. And then just the colors. It's such a fun and cool vibe with the blues and the teals and the aquas. Just some really great cohesiveness going on on the outside of the ship. Now, another great place that you can see the ship from is very characteristic of a spirit class, and that is deck three. It is an awesome wraparound deck. You have some great outdoor spaces where you can take in the views of the ocean. Speaking of deck three, cruise tip, there is a secret space. Once you have taken in your secret space and you head back into the ship, down on deck two, that atrium. Now, I mentioned uh, you saw my face a little bit ago. <laughs> that atrium, it is clear that Margaritaville at sea has put a lot of money and effort into this atrium. It is one of the wow spaces on board the ship. As you look up and you've got that, you know, floor to ceiling uh, mural and the skylight. Speaking of the mural. Yeah, that mural is really awesome. If you take those glass elevators, there's three of them, take them from the bottom of the ship all the way to the top, and you'll go from an undersea experience to up in the clouds where the hemisphere dancer flies what a cool cool experience it is now do you remember what the name of that uh atrium is called the flip flop atrium and there is a giant flip flop in there check out the a1a this is the jimmy buffett memorial highway and it is found at the forward of deck three such a cool space it's nice and quiet you don't have a lot of foot traffic going through it really a great place to just curl up with the book listen to music, watch us on YouTube, whatever you choose. Honestly, this space is a nod to the past. This is a a classic staple of the Spirit Class design. There are so many cool nods to the past on this ship. Now, we didn't find a lot of Costa logos. We did find a couple sprinkled throughout the ship, which was really cool for us cruise geeks. But there are so many nods to the past. The the little tiles, the dotty boards. There are some of the dotty boards, directional signage that are still lit up behind the new signs. That was a cool thing to find. Yes. Um, We talked about the the flooring inside the Havana Havana Daydreaming. Daydreaming. Absolutely gorgeous. But what Mm. I absolutely (laughs) love is how Margaritaville took the past and then infused the brand into it. They didn't just slap the brand over it. They found ways to marry the history of the Costa Atlantica with the Margaritaville at Sea Islander. Again, I've got goosebumps. It is, it's a beautiful interior design. Yeah. We enjoyed it so much that we found ourselves often playing the game Margaritaville at Sea or Costa Atlantica. We were trying so hard to figure out what was original to the ship and what was a new addition. And it was so much fun finding these little hidden gems all over the entire ship. That speaks to how well balanced yes. the design is. Yes. That theater, like you said, we don't think they touched the theater. Mm-hmm. Maybe some new lighting or audio. But yeah. I mean, the design of that theater 
why invest money if it looks just as good today as it did 20 years ago right something silly that i absolutely loved was they have covered up all of the clocks on the ship and so they all say it's five o'clock somewhere now i loved that at first (laughs) but then we never knew what time it was and so uh fortunately we've got our watches or our clocks this is really important when they tell you to stay on ship time and it's always five o'clock that doesn't (laughs) matter they will leave you in cozumel it is not five o'clock and so uh just keep that in mind carry your phone or your watch with you because all of the clocks on the ship say five o'clock even the one back by the water slide yes the manual clock it's five o'clock somewhere back there as well it's true so speaking of that five o'clock somewhere, we we just loved the Margaritaville at sea touches all throughout the entire ship. There are so many cool touches in the artwork. There's the flip flop island. So cool. There's that uh, painting that they commissioned that has the islander leaving Tampa Bay, like Under just the bridge. Really cool pieces and nods throughout that you you know you're on a you know you're on a Margaritaville ship. Right, and I loved those two pools, the two forward pools. You've got the five o'clock summer pool with the five o'clock bar. Just some really great themed elements. The surfboards for showers. They've got a giant margarita maker right there. It pours into the pool. It pours into the pool. You also have the land shark pool with the land shark bar and a giant land shark keg. Like really well thought spaces. All throughout the ship. And then when you get back to your stateroom, again, there are just the colors are beautiful. Now, I know you've seen some of these staterooms and we have a stateroom video as well. But the staterooms, this was another area where they just gutted and they invested a bunch of money. The palm trees, the wallpaper on the wall, the the murals, the parrots. um, The surfboard hangers for your towel. It oh. is an absolutely beautiful stateroom. Now, it the is. bathroom is original. They updated it, um, but it is absolutely a great design. This even carried through to the lighting on the ship. As you're walking down the hallways where the staterooms are, you've got little parrots on the hall lights. It was such a cool little touch. Little intentional touches throughout this entire ship. Yeah. We'll be curious what you think and what you see when you're on board. Drop it in the comments below. Speaking of the stateroom, there is just so much storage. Again, we fought over, you have that drawer. I don't need any more drawers. <laughs> We've got so much space in that stateroom. Gosh, I love when we have that problem. Same, same. <laughs> we also love that the lamps that were bedside had both USB and USB-C charging ports on them. That was really convenient yeah, for us really since nice there's only touch. one real outlet in there. Really nice touch. I personally loved the Saint Somewhere Spa bath amenities, the soap, all of that stuff. I I loved it on the Paradise and way to go Margaritaville for keeping it here on the Islander. Yes. And you hear us talk about it all the time on this channel, but those walls are magnetic. So bring those hooks with you so you can get things off the counter and onto the walls so it's easier storage. And the final thing on the design, and we love this about the Spirit class, is that Magra Dome over the midship pool. It closes up, Mm. keeps you nice and dry, but it's just a wonderful space to get away from the elements where you can still enjoy some places to sit outside. That is a lot to love, and we're not done. We've talked about the food, drinks, entertainment, and ship design. Let's jump into the miscellaneous. Let's rapid fire this one. Faster Chill is one of the packages you can add onto your reservation. I highly recommend it. You get your priority check-in, you get a dedicated security line, you get a priority uh, counter where you get your ship cards, you have a lounge. We had sandwiches and soda and water in the lounge. We were the first to be on the ship. Like there were so many perks that came with it. Now there is the perk of priority seating in the theater. That was not on quite yet in the first couple of sailings. That's okay. We still had great seats as we mentioned earlier. And then you had priority debark into port and just there are so many perks. Oh, and Wi-Fi. Yeah. Wi-Fi is included with that package as well. It was well worth the money. Highly recommend. Yes. Now, speaking of the terminal building, you have the opportunity in there to make your purchases of other upcharge options. Right. You can do your dining package. You can figure out what you want to do at JWB Prime Steakhouse. You can the buy spa. the ultimate chill, the spa. It's all there, so it's super convenient. Yeah, I love how they just have it there in the terminal. Yeah. So, and, and you don't have to, obviously, but it gives you the ability to take a look. Yeah. I also love that they are still putting finishing touches on the ship. We have seen crew members working on things from top to bottom. And for cruise nerds, that's really cool. That's why we love inaugural sailings, because you see that happening throughout the ship. Right. 
Having sailed on the first cruise and the second, we have already seen some process changes implemented, which we absolutely love, such as, you know, when to change your times when you're going to a port in Cozumel. Stay on ship time. <laughs> Uh, and also the the loudness or the music just playing on the ship overall. That first cruise, it was all hours of the day and night. And on the second cruise, it's actually gotten quieter in the evening hours, which we really like. Especially in the hallways. I mean, it was bumping in those hallways at two in the <laughs> it was morning. <laughs> party. <laughs> um, and the muster process has yeah. even evolved. So right. they are listening and they are learning mm -hmm. and they're making changes, which is all we could hope for. Yes. So one of the cool things about joining for an inaugural cruise is you get some cool inaugural swag. And this was no exception. We got this really awesome tote bag. It's got the Margaritaville at Sea Islander name on it, and it's got the dates. We absolutely love this. We saw people wearing it when they went out to the beach. An awesome touch. Very cool. One of probably the most memorable experiences and spaces on board that I want to talk about is QMN. Now we speculated what this was in the deck plans when we did the review. Uh, you saw the lost footage when we did the ship tour. Yep. Um, QMN quietly making noise. You, you, Some of you already commented on in the comments that you knew what it stood <laughs> for, but what is it? Right. It is an amazing space on board Margarita Villa at Sea Islander. It is a speakeasy yes. experience you have got some of the absolute coolest nostalgia uh we're sitting I, I hope you've made it this far because we are sitting in front of jimmy's first ever guitar i have goosebumps yeah. we're in this space with his vinyl collection we're in this space with all sorts of history and it's just such a cool space now it's just a preview of what is to come. There is more. Margaritaville Etsy is working on even more for this experience in this space. Yep. So stay tuned. But I will tell you, we are proud to quietly be making some noise. Yes, we are. It wouldn't be a cruise if we didn't have actual stops in ports. Key West, my first time to Key West. And it was such a great experience. We were a little delayed, but you know, weather happens and we had just such a great time. Speaking of weather, we actually loved that. Now, some people yes. didn't love this, but we loved it. We knew we were on the ship. The captain navigated those storms perfectly. Yes. I, I mean, we tilted a little, we listed a little, but we we loved that feeling. Yeah. And so thank you to the captain for getting us there safely. Right. We also went to Cosmel, and I love that we ported in Cosmel. You leave the ship and there's a Margaritaville right there. So you leave Margaritaville at sea to go to Margaritaville on land. It is such a cool experience. It is. Now, some people have asked us if the stateroom keys are pre-punched. They are not. However, it is super easy to get it done. Just go to guest services or the casino and they will take care of it for you. I do want to shout out one of the things that we absolutely loved about this experience was getting to meet so many ship-based and Margaritaville shoreside crew members. They absolutely made these cruises yeah. so memorable, uh, just so open to feedback, so open to sitting down and, and just having a conversation with us. It really made us feel like part of a broader family and getting to hear so much about the history of the brand, as well as just hearing from some of Jimmy's personal friends and, yeah. and hearing some really, really cool stories. Um, it's happening again. Something that, something that I will never forget. Yeah, this space must be cold. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> and we also want to give a huge shout out yeah. to all of our followers that stopped us on the ship to say we watched your video of the Miracle versus Islander uh, and just we, we booked this cruise because yeah. we watched your videos like that is still so humbling. Yes. Thank you. We hope we did this ship proud. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And also a big shout out to some of the other channels that we had the opportunity to interact with. JJ Cruises. Where's Walter TV. Controversial Cruising. Midships. Thank you so much for making us feel like your family as well. It was such a great time to be able to chat with you and just share our experiences and our love for this ship. And for anyone we missed, we love you. Thank you so much. Uh, we, ne we, we, we try not to say a lot of names because we never want to miss someone, but uh, overall, um, such a welcoming experience on board. It was. Well, that covers everything that we loved and what a list it was. Stay tuned because we are now going to dive into what we didn't love about Margaritaville at Sea Islander. 
This is kind of a big thing that we're hearing a lot of comments about is that there is no app. And we agree there was some challenges not having an app to actually refer to on the sailing. Uh, there wasn't really an easy way to check your balance and that sort of thing. That was the that was the hardest part. I mean, yeah. we had the daily planner. You can download it uh, on your phone as well. So we were able to navigate around to the events and that easily. Right. But the balance was the biggest challenge that right. we heard. We can't talk about didn't love without talking about the food. Now, there's been a lot reported on the food on Margaritaville at Sea Islander. You heard us talk about a lot that we loved. However, there were some things that we didn't love about right. the food. Now, we didn't even once have a stone cold meal or stone cold dish. There were a couple of times where something came out that was lukewarm. Yeah. I think it has to do with the timing between the kitchen and when it's served, uh, at least in the dining rooms. Yeah. And that's something that's going to be an easy fix as they get into a rhythm. Um, we had a couple of things on the buffet that weren't as hot as we would have expected. But by and large, everything, that baked onion soup Ooh. at JWB Steakhouse, I waited 20 minutes before I could eat that thing. It was, that was, it was steaming. <laughs> that was piping um, hot. So, so good news. Um, a lot of the, the potential issues that may have been there already seem to be resolving themselves. It's, that's true. Now, speaking of the buffet, there were a couple of issues that we found. The food that was served at the breakfast time was probably the weakest food that we found on the ship. Uh, there's some process improvements that they can definitely implement, and I think it will get better. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of that, there was also some challenges with labeling on the buffet all hours of the day, not just one, one set of meals, uh, where you didn't know exactly what you were putting on your plate. This was especially true with the soups. Now, yes. the great news is there's always crew up there. And so each day I would just say, which soup is this? <laughs> um, and they were always tasty. And that focaccia bread next to the soups, yeah. don't miss out on that. <laughs> right. Uh, I will say that the serving hours were a little bit of a challenge as well. Now, if you go out into port, when you get onto the ship, you have two dining options. You can go to Lo Frank and Lola's Pizzeria, or you can get cheeseburger in paradise. Yeah. Everything else does close down at 2.30 on your typical day and doesn't reopen until six. So you're kind of stuck waiting in those long lines with everyone else. And then there was also some confusion on when Island Eats and Tiki Grill were gonna be open and serving. Mm -hmm. Again, some strange times there, but that is also an upcharge, or both of those are upcharge venues. Now, I didn't love the late open timing because we have the ultimate dining chill and you have to really eat that for dinner because they yeah. don't open until at least 3 p.m. and right. the portion sizes, Huge. no, it was great. We love the tea grill. There's a video about that out there. We loved it, but the portion sizes are huge. You couldn't eat there and then go to dinner on right. top of that with no. the credits that we had. And so the timing is a little bit uh, weird for those. Right. Again, I think, the, I think all of the timing will evolve. I think so too. Too. It would have been a great thing for lunch while you're sitting on the fantail of the ship oh, and just gosh. enjoying some food. To have Island Eats, to have a lobster roll, right. oh, that would, that be, would nice. be amazing. Now we're going to record an entire video on the Ultimate Dining Chill Package and tell you how to get the most out of that package. One of the things that we didn't love in the stateroom is the phones aren't yet labeled. We didn't know how to contact guest services or maintenance or room service. Like there was no information on how to actually contact those uh, places. Speaking of room service, there actually isn't room service available right now on board. Uh, we went down and asked for a menu just to kind of see what it looks like and help share that information. And unfortunately, they are still working out the details and all of the intricacies that go with it. So it's coming, but not quite here yet. Right. Boarding on the first two cruises, a little chaotic, uh, which we expected. We always say if you're booking an inaugural pack, a little extra patience. Um, the actual faster chill process, super easy. Yeah. But the to the ship stampede, that was wild. They're probably going to have to spread out uh, the number of packages that they sell or those that are in that first uh, boarding group yeah. because, I mean, it was, it, it created a, a big bottleneck. Yeah. Um, and then speaking of bottlenecks. Yeah, the back-to-back -back process. They're still working on it. We were the first back-to-backs. Uh, there was a total of three of us going through that process. So we expected it. We yes. expected this as well. Um, so some hiccups with getting us off of the ship once we were off the ship, getting into the terminal building. No one knew what to do with <laughs> us. Just a lot of things that they're trying to figure out. We finally got checked in and then didn't know if we could go back on. They wanted us to board with everyone in the terminal building. Uh, we finally got up to the ship and then there was still more holding because not everything was fully cleared. So just some little kinks here and there. Didn't love it, but we know it's going to get improved. And what they got right though is a Margaritaville uh, employee found us, brought us aside, escorted us to check in, yeah. took our pictures, 
escorted us back to that space. I mean, so while there was some confusion and there was some chaos in that morning, I, we still were taken care of and we got on the ship and were handed another glass of champagne. Yay. Now, one of the things that we didn't love about Islander is actually a change Costa made to this ship. And they removed that, you know, included sauna and spa that we've come to love on the Spirit Class ships. And they put in rooms in that space, which also means that there are some epic forward facing rooms that have these giant balconies. Yeah. But that also means no forward facing public spaces that those secret spaces that we've talked about on the channel a lot we love that about the spirit class and so we spent a lot of time down on deck three because you've got that beautiful promenade view now moving into the ship talking about retail space we haven't really talked about the retail on board but i will say there are three great stores on this ship that we've gone through and, and enjoyed some walking around but the one challenge that we noticed is there's not any Margaritaville at Sea Islander t-shirts. No wearables that we could yeah. get our hands on. And, you know, we love to wear that type of merchandise for our videos. Now, there is a bunch of Margaritaville at Sea um, merch. Some of it's really cute. Yeah. I love this sweatshirt. Oh, <laughs> I love it so much. Um, but, yeah, we'd love uh, something ship specific. And so that's an easy fix that we hope will come with time. Yeah. One of the other things I didn't love, and this is kind of in the food category, not once when I went to get an ice cream did they have cones in stock. And so I saw those delicious cones several times flying around the ship with people eating them. Um, I, I always ate my ice cream out of a bowl, which is probably fine from a <laughs> calories perspective, but I really want to try one of those cones. And also the last thing that we'll talk about is uh, when we were disembarking the ship in Key West, it was a little rough around the edges in yeah. that debark lounge area where you were walking your way to the gangway. Yeah. Um, just using some blue tarps and some construction, construction lighting. Yeah. It wasn't the most appealing appearance. With everything that they got right with the branding of the ship, that is such an easy fix to put up some branded hallway wraps, like really make you, really gets you into the spirit make and the Caribbean vibes. Make it look like an island. Yes. Ooh. Oh, ooh, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. So again, easy fixes that uh, we hope to see implemented on a future sailing. Yeah. Final thing we're going to talk about is not a love, not a didn't love, but something that you may want to be aware of. Now, debark morning was busy. Lines wrapped down the entire ship. The words relaxed debark have never been more important than they are here. After an amazing vacation, you don't need the stress of waiting in line. Just stay on board, go grab breakfast, go find a lounge, go relax and enjoy your final morning on this beautiful ship. I promise you it will keep your vacation glow lasting longer. That's right. And speaking of those little issues that you may encounter, the guest services line, while it appeared long, they did a fantastic job at bringing down the masses. So they they had the spa manager there. They had the sales manager there. There were different personnel appearing at that line to talk to different people and help them work out their small issues. They were roving. Make... They were yeah. roving through the line to, to, to get rid of the small issues so that the guest services crew could take care of the major ones. Lines were never longer than 10 minutes. It was great. For us. For right. us. We've right. seen some report that they waited in line over an hour. Uh, I don't I don't know. That, that was that's... an hour experience. Yeah. Right. And the last part of that is they did have internet service uh, desk, if you will, at the guest services counter. And by the second sailing, we saw that they had moved that up to the Photoshop, which is a really smart idea. Pull those internet questions away from guest services so that they can focus on what they do best. Already making changes. The muster process. It is the old school muster process where they bring you out onto the deck three promenade and you see them put on the life jacket. Now we did see some people say that they hated this and how could Margarita Valetzi do this and it ruined the vacation. <laughs> I'll tell you, if a 10 minute muster process to put on your life jacket ruins your vacation, I probably wouldn't book this ship. I probably and wouldn't even suggest going on a cruise. I wouldn't suggest going on vacation. Right. Um, honestly, the 10 minutes, it actually harkened back to the days, the old school muster days. Right. We, we actually didn't mind it. Um, it wasn't a loved, it wasn't a didn't love, but just something to be aware of. Yes, you are going to have to take 10 minutes. It is maritime rules right. that require you to know how to put that life jacket on. Absolutely. And the very last thing that we're going to talk about in this section was our very first sailing. That first night, we encountered some plumbing issues. This is an older ship. I know that they didn't fully rip out all the plumbing and put in new plumbing. It was down for maybe two, two hours, hours and it was back up and we haven't had any other plumbing issues since. Yeah. So not a not something that really no. impacted our vacation. It can happen. Yep.
Okay, so that's everything that we loved and didn't love. Let's jump into what we hated. hated. Now, this is a very short list that you're going to hear that we actually hated about the ship. And one of those things has to do with signage on board. Oh, yeah. And it really impacted the forward stairwell. So, right. we, you know, we always take stairs on our cruises. Well, several of the floors don't have any navigational signage when you are going down the stairs. So multiple times we passed the floor that we were going to because as Oops. we're running down or running up the stairs, we're not paying attention no, except to counting. the signage. Um, and they're just missing. Now, it doesn't appear to impact the other stairwells, their signs. So maybe they just ran out of some floor signs. Um, but worst case scenario, we got in some extra stairs as we either walked up or walked back down a flight. Right. <laughs> Something else that we hated about our stateroom, and this may vary for you. We had an inside cabin and we did not have a refrigerator. They ripped them out. They're gone. Now, we have heard reports that refrigerators are present in Ocean View and higher categories yes. of cabins. Um, but, you know, when we get our sodas, when we get our waters, when we get champagne, we like yeah. to store that in a cool place. And unfortunately, we didn't have that option. Something else that we hated was the internet that very first day. I mean, it was, it was up, it was down, it was... Now, the good news is it progressively got better each day. Right. We were able to post to Instagram, we were able to text, we were able to, you know, make sure that we were sharing stories and right. stuff like that with you. Um, but we still never were able to stream. So we had the premium, we weren't able to stream. Now, we did hear reports from others who did a live stream on the internet, but that was something that we ran into issues in. Part of it, we also had really stormy weather. Yes. And so we know on ships in general, even with Starlink, like this ship has, uh, storms can also have an impact on the internet. But but we hated that experience. It was really stressful that yeah. first day because we had so much to tell you about. <laughs> um, but as they work through um, a full ship, metering bandwidth, figuring that out, we fully expected to see some of that on the, the first couple of sailings as well. Right. Now, something else that we hated, and we you've heard us talk about it a little bit earlier, and that was there's a lot of confusion about the Ultimate Dining Chill Package and how it's to be used. Uh, we don't really have a resolution just yet, but stay tuned to the channel because we will be putting out a full oh, video yeah. to talk about that package and how to use it. Right, we talk about it all the time. When you book an inaugural sailing, the crew is still learning. Um, we have seen a, a lot of things where the crew is still learning and that's okay. That's why we book these. Yeah. And so um, we, as, as, as a travel agent, Rocky always advises his clients that, hey, be aware that if you're going to book an inaugural, there's there going to be challenges. learnings, there are going to be some challenges, and that's yes. to be expected. It's not for everyone. We no. get that. And, and we respect those who say, well, if I'm spending my money, I shouldn't have to have the crew learning. Totally respect <laughs> that. Absolutely. Yeah. But then that likely means that an inaugural sailing isn't for you. And that's, that's, that's okay because there's plenty of other sailings out there. Yeah. Okay. And this last one that I hated, and don't judge me for this. <laughs> There is no ketchup anywhere to be found in the buffet. Literally, I want ketchup on my eggs in the morning. And so I, I asked a crew member and he's like, well, I don't have any. And he sent me over to another station. He didn't have any. I talked to one of the, the leaders in the yeah. buffet and she was like, well, no, we don't ha go out to go out to um, Cheeseburger in Paradise. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was like, that's an easy fix. Honestly, go to the grocery store, buy a couple of bottles of ketchup <laughs> and put those out on the buffet. Okay, that was that was the last thing that, that I hated. That hit you hard. <laughs> I love my ketchup. <laughs> that's it. That's I mean, it. That's that was the end it. of the list. There was very little that we didn't love or hated about this experience um, on board Margaritaville at Sea Islander. Right. So that's it. That's what we loved, didn't loved and hated about Margaritaville at Sea Islander. Our final thoughts. I will tell you, this has been such a memorable experience as an inaugural cruise on board this ship. We met so many amazing people, had such great experiences, and it'll live on in our hearts and our memories forever. You heard me mention this. It started right from the moment we got to the terminal. Margaritaville got this right when you walked in and you were on island time yes. right from the very beginning. Uh, such a cool experience all around. Yes. Overall, Rocky, yeah. you know we do this at the end of every video. How many ships would you give Margaret Bill at Sea Islander? You know, I think this is a four and a half out of five ship experience. So many memories, as I said it already. So many things to love. And there's so many learnings happening on the ship. And I know it's going to get better. Yeah, I, I would completely agree with you. There were some bumps and, and bruises along the way, which we came into this experience expecting. We saw some of those things. 
We are excited. We've already been looking. Yes. Literally, we've already been looking at future sailings to come back to check out how things have evolved and changed right. with Islander. Yes, we're excited for those seven night cruises. Ooh, yeah. Did you know you can book one? Contact him and he'll right. book one for you. <laughs> Join us maybe. And yeah, maybe. there you go. That would be fun. That would be fun. This sailing, we got to learn more about Jimmy Buffett, the man. We got to hear stories of love and adoration from friends and family and, and close confidants. And one of the best things that I heard this entire two sailings was one of Jimmy's close friends shared that if he were here on board, he would be so proud of what this ship shows. And I think that's true. I, I do too. I really do. And so, Jimmy, thank you for the light and love that you brought to the world. Fins up. <laughs>